so many people look at um, believers in the pro-life movement and they say, well, you're just pro-baby. And that's not the case right. at all. Or they say, you know, you're just pro-birth. You just mm-hmm. you kind of leave woman, uh, women once they've had a child, then they're left hanging and they have this huge yeah. responsibility that you're no longer responsible for yeah. and you don't care about. Mm-hmm. And so I love that, you know, ministries like um, Operation Pro-Love, like the Pregnancy Resource Center, really are just completely, um, I guess, debunking that myth. Yeah. Everybody, welcome back to Finding Jesus. I'm Jordan, your host, and we are in an exciting series right now where we're highlighting women who are playing different ministry roles in our community um, and really impacting the world around us. So we've spoken with several women these last several weeks, and we have Serena Crabtree with us today. Um, Serena is the director of development for our local pregnancy resource center in Stanley County. So I've known Serena because I volunteered some with yes, the pregnancy ma'am. resource center, um, and it's just been kind of exciting to see you blossom in your role because you've been doing this for how many years now? Two years now. Two years. Yes, ma'am. So just tell us a little bit about you, your background, kind of where you came from, because you're not a Stanley County native. Nope. (laughs) We love Stanley County, though. It's been an honor to be here in North Carolina. My husband and I moved here from Pennsylvania about three years ago um, out of a leap of faith, basically, and neither of us had jobs uh, lined up, anything (laughs) like that. And so we said, the Lord said, go. And we're like, okay, we're here. And so... um, served at our church that the Lord planted us at and then uh, just took each step at a time. And it's been so exciting. And we love North Carolina. Yeah. We love the warmth too. And that's super say, exciting for yeah. us. I love that. Um, that's kind of how TJ and I try to live our lives. Mm-hmm. It's just these like huge steps of faith. We haven't made like massive moves though, like geographically <laughs> like that. So that's so, um, I don't know, it's inspiring. You know, a lot of people don't see that as normal, but I think as believers, it should be the normal just yeah. to be obedient and follow wherever God leads yeah. and just be willing to pick up and and move wherever it's the most exciting thing just to be obedient to him and know that he's he's leading us into triumph so he's got us covered (laughs) yeah absolutely well and just to know that he is so sovereign that he has a plan wherever you go and Mm -hmm. you really can't mess that up because you know he promises to go with you to go before you so wherever you wind up he's going to be right in the middle of it exactly so so your husband works at the church that you guys you know came and planted with Mm -hmm. um but you worked at the prc the pregnancy resource center and you said you've been there for two years what kind of led you in into that direction how did that happen yeah so even before we moved here when i knew that we were going to be here in Stanley County, um, the Pregnancy Resource Center, it just jumped out at me. And so um, I applied, I kind of made up an interview for myself. I was like, here I am. And they weren't hiring. And so um, the Lord led me to work someplace else for a year and uh, was faithful there. And then um, again, believed that the Lord was leading me to reach out. And again, there was no like, no a opening. job, yeah, but eventually I did find out that um, there was one, and it, during that I knew I had such a bias. I was like, Lord, I want to be there so much. Like, I need to know that it's from you, though. And He did lead each step of the way, and I was able to uh, work in the fundraising, um, marketing, social media um, aspect of the Pregnancy Resource Center, which is so exciting to be able to. Um, see God working in that side of the ministry. And I yeah. love being able to do that. It's an honor. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's such a great group of women to be mm-hmm. a part of. That's why I wanted to volunteer there. Yeah. You know, I, I knew Gina from church and yep. other places, and she was the director at the time. Yes. And just knowing the women who worked there, I was like, this is an awesome environment. Mm-hmm. Like, as a believer, why would you not want to go be yeah. just surrounded um, by so many people who are, you know, living their faith and really making such an impact? Mm-hmm. So I know you do more of the fundraising side, but can you tell us just kind of in a nutshell, what does the Pregnancy yeah, Resource Center do? Absolutely. So we offer, so all of our services are free. We're not benefiting at all financially from any of the women who are coming. Um, our heart is to be able to serve them and give them all of the resources that they need. So we'll offer free pregnancy tests. We'll offer uh, free ultrasounds. We'll offer options counseling, especially for the women who might be contemplating abortion. They need to know what's uh, involved in all of that. We're never going to refer or recommend for an abortion but we do want them to know what's uh, involved in it physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, so that they they know what they're getting into and so they know we they know what's entailed with um parenting what an abortion looks like and then if they're not ready to parent but we do talk to them about adoption as well yeah so we want to make sure that they have education on all of that 
And for, the, for those who are wanting to parent, uh, we don't want to just leave them at that point. We want to be able to be a support for them, be able to um, help them with parenting, um, especially for the first time moms and for people who might not have support. We yeah. want to be able to give them the resources that they needed. What does healthy parenting look like? Um, or even for the women who might not be in a place financially to parent, we want to be able to offer them the support, the material needs. So we have a parenting program uh, yeah. where they can complete classes. They get one-on-one one support up until their baby is 18 months old so cool. yeah and we get donations so that we can get have their crib have a diaper bag have diapers and wipes yeah. formula anything that they might need during this journey so we want to be able to help them with that yeah I yeah. love that because um, when we talked to Operation Pro Love mm-hmm. Lindsay's heart really was um, we want to come alongside uh, so many people look at um, believers in the pro-life movement and they say well you're just pro-baby and that's not the case right. at all or they say you know you're just pro-birth you just mm-hmm. you kind of leave woman uh, women once they've had a child then they're left hanging and they have this huge yeah. responsibility that you're no longer responsible for yeah. and you don't care about mm-hmm. and so I love that you know, ministries like um, Operation Pro Love, like the Pregnancy Resource Center, really are just completely, um, I guess, debunking that myth, yeah. you know, that there are people who say, no, we want to come alongside you. Yeah. We want to support you. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to make sure you have the tools that you need to be successful as yeah. a mom. And not just moms. I mean, uh, men can be a part, fathers mm-hmm. can be a part, and, yes. and often are a part of that decision making. Absolutely. Um, so I love that you guys are really ministering to the needs. And, and it's not just a, a pro baby organization, but you guys so care about the woman who's sitting in front of you right and the woman we do we ultimately want to be able to minister to the woman and to the baby Um, a lot of the women who are coming into the pregnancy resource center before they can see the hope love and truth for their baby they need to know that God loves them yeah and so that's really the woman who's there she's like well is my life over are my plans ruined they need to know God's love hope and truth towards her first and we're not oblivious to the fact that many women do choose to have an abortion um statistics show that one in four women do end up choosing an abortion i think by the age they're 45 and so we do offer um abortion recovery classes yeah uh, because we want them to be able to know there's healing that there's forgiveness there's hope for men and for women because men are uh, affected by this as well it's not just a woman's um issue at all and so we do offer those um courses for free because uh the enemy just tries to twist things so badly that um with the condemnation and so letting women know that there is freedom there is healing uh, from that as well that's such an important part to hit on too because it's not you're not just saying well gosh you've made this choice and now we have no place for you now we don't care about you it's actually no like our heart breaks for you because we know that what you must be going through is so difficult so many women carry shame and guilt for their entire lives Mm -hmm. because of one decision Mm -hmm. um so just the fact that you guys offer that type of service to say hey let us walk with you um towards jesus through healing through freedom in christ um it's just really important and i I hope that more and more people are learning that that is a service y'all offer yeah. because that's important mm-hmm. you know uh, I think that's one of those things that so many women feel like they just kind of have to suffer in silence yeah. because it's not talked about mm-hmm. you know so the fact that that is um, so readily available to them is really encouraging yeah. amen yeah amen. now your role with the pregnancy resource center is different you know you were saying not so much the one-on-one counseling side of things but you do the fundraising mm-hmm. the the financial side of the ministry what does that look like for you you know how have you you didn't have training in that area yeah. Correct. So it's all on the job. Right. Um, And I love that, that God doesn't um, call the qualified. He qualifies the called. So how have you kind of grown in that and how have you learned? It's been an exciting adventure, just personally and in the ministry. The Lord's been needing to show me um, how it's honestly about trust. And yeah. being able to be in rest with him, especially when it comes to finances. I'm not my provider. I'm not my source. It needs to be him. And so when I'm trying to do it, it's yeah. not going to work out anyways for myself personally or for the ministry. Right. And so it's been a really cool um, journey learning basically how to do business differently. Each day when I get to the office, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Uh, Isaiah forty-eight seventeen has been a really big verse for me, especially this year. It says, I am the Lord your God. I teach you to profit and I lead you in the ways you should go. And so, so it's good. not me who's trying to come up with like the best fundraiser. It's not me who's leading myself. He's the one who's leading me. He's the one who's teaching me how to do these 
pro- how to profit, how to do these fundraisers. So yeah. it's really been a trust process and learning not to be anxious that the biggest indicator of faith, of walking in faith, is rest. And oh, so, so yeah, and so that's been a big, personally for myself, learning how to walk in that and learning how to do that for the ministry as well, that... Um, whatever the fundraiser is, we do a few different fundraisers throughout the year, whatever that is, that I'm learning how to rest in him, learning that he's my source, Mm -hmm. learning that, okay, if the Lord developed this ministry, which I do believe he did, then he's going to teach me the steps that I need to be walking out in order to for him to profit in order for him to be able to grow the ministry. So it's been a really, really cool journey. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so funny you mentioned that because if you guys caught the video with Erin last time, she said something that was so similar, Mm -hmm. just that in her role, not as, you know, necessarily raising funds, but just being in a position of ministry. She's like, you know, each day I I enter that day by saying, okay, God, what are we doing today? You know, what, what's your heart for the ministry? And I think it's the exact same with fundraising. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of people don't like talking about the financial side of things, Mm -hmm. especially ministry, but we live in a physical world. Mm -hmm. So there are physical resources that are needed. Mm -hmm. Um, And just, you know, I know from my experience with working um, with the Pregnancy Resource Center and with Gina and her guidance as my mentor, um, that you guys are totally private funded. Yes. You know, so you're not receiving any government grants, you know, anything like that. So it really is a total walk by faith. of Like, God, (laughs) if we're going to do this, you're going to have to provide. Yep. And it's exciting being able to walk that out. I mean, the Lord doesn't, um, Um, operate by our worldly economic system. You look at Isaac and it was a literal drought an economic drought and the Lord he in obedience God said okay plant during this time and he planted and what did he do he reaped a hundredfold and so when the Lord's leading something we don't have to try to make things happen in our own in our own ways you know even if the economy might be looking different which I know that it has how how fitting for the towns that we're (laughs) living in we don't have to really worry all we have to do is be obedient abide in him listen be obedient and he's gonna guide us that's so so, such a timely word especially I think for the believer because Mm -hmm. you know so many people do kind of get caught up in the how things are so expensive right now Mm -hmm. our economy is like tanking and there's this sense of like anxiety Mm -hmm. I think because of you know what the world looks like around us and I love that like the people of God don't have to even be phased by that because we don't operate by that. Um, And I don't know as far as like numbers go. um, I know Faith Alive Ministries is thriving right Mm -hmm. now. I think the Pregnancy Resource Center, the last several fundraisers that y'all have done have exceeded any that were in the past. It's like each year God's taken you from glory to glory and growing you. He's been Um, so faithful. It's been so cool to watch him work. It's all him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's such a, I feel like that should be such a testament to unbelievers, Mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to see a ministry that's seeking after God and say, why in the world? Or are they not struggling like everybody else yeah. is right now? Um, well, it's because of Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's Amen. because of God. Now, you talked about just abiding with Him, resting in Him. Mm -hmm. Um, That's one thing that we really focus on a lot with Finding Jesus, the channel, is helping um, moms, Christian women, really find a place of rest, finding a place where they can, you know, commune with God. What does that look like for you personally? Because I know it kind of has to overflow for your personal life into the ministry. Yeah. Well, just a funny testimony. When we first moved here, I mean, neither of us had jobs. And I remember the day before our first rent was due, and we're like crap there's nothing (laughs) like what do we do and the Lord supernaturally provided for us that night and I remember um our pastor actually told us like after the Lord provided he said how do you feel right now I'm like I feel so relieved I feel so at peace and what the Lord was showing us through that is that peace and that rest is something that we can live in all the day all the time every day even whenever there's a bill due or even if things aren't looking like they might be working out knowing that I still need to be staying in that same rest that same relief that mm-hmm. I felt after I found out that all my bills were were finished they were paid right. for and so that was like one of those aha moments for me that okay the same feeling of rest the same feeling of peace knowing that my God is providing for every need that's what I can be living in and that's what I can be resting in every day and so and since then it's just been a growth process every time yeah. as the Lord's been increasing us increasing the ministry 
being able to stay in that rest like that. That's it's been so big. good. <laughs> well, and it's so neat because we've talked time and time again with these different ministry leaders that so often God will do in your ministry what he's teaching you in your personal life. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what you've experienced, yeah. you know, is he, he walked you through a season of like learning to really trust him and rest in mm-hmm. him. And now you're in a position with a ministry where you really have to trust him yeah. and rest in him. Yeah. Um, TJ and I talk about this all the time that the our walk with God, really the Christian faith comes down to, do you trust Jesus? Yeah. Do you trust him? Um, because when you do, you can rest yeah. because I think when you're sure of his nature, you know, like God is good. Mm-hmm. He's faithful. He's going to provide. He's a good father. Yeah. Like when you know all of those things, you can just rest because even when things look shaky or uncertain, you're like, I know that you know what you're doing mm-hmm. and I can trust you. Yeah. What you said about knowing God's nature. I think that's key. Knowing that he is loving. He is he is our provider. That is so key because then when we have that in our mind, then we're like, okay, even when things around me aren't looking mm-hmm. like they're working out, I know what his nature is. And I know that he's still working things all together for my good because I'm called by him and yeah. I love him. And so I think, I mean, just even the verses, you know, cast all your care on the Lord because he cares for you. Do not be anxious about anything. The word says that money is the least of all of these, the least in the kingdom yeah. of God. And so what an opportunity to be able to just grow grow in giving all anxiety to him and all cares to him regarding yeah. that like then we can grow into more of the kingdom of God <laughs> yeah and that's so perfect we've had an episode actually called rooted where we talked about the importance of your roots mm-hmm. being deep in the word um, because then when things do come up you do have like you just spouted off several scriptures mm-hmm. you know that just like you've hidden God's word in your heart mm-hmm. and it comes back when you need it Amen. you know you're able to recall it because you've deposited it into yeah. your spirit so that's something that we've talked about we also have a, a video that was about how to study God's word because that's so important yeah. for believers and I think so many of us if we were raised in the church it was kind of like that's the thing you're supposed to do like that's my Christian checklist and then as you like live life a little bit you're like okay no this actually is life this yes. is like my lifeline I yes. have to have God's word hidden in my heart so that I'm not swayed I'm not shaken mm-hmm. you know I'm, I don't fall apart or get super anxious when things don't line up mm-hmm. or look like they're going to work out. Yeah. So just Amen. the the roots and the foundation in God's word Amen. is so important. It's vital. Yeah. It's life. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm curious, like how now is your relationship with God leading you in ministry, like on a daily basis? I know you talked about, you know, just being led and trusting mm-hmm. him, but you know, is, is prayer an integral part of it or what does it look like as far as your relationship and how that pertains to the ministry right now? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um what the Lord's been showing me more is just abiding with him throughout the day. It's not like, okay, now I'm going to pray with you and now I'm going to see how you're leading me. Okay, God, I need to make a decision now. What are you saying? Just staying in that um continual yeah. fellowship with him, that intimate fellowship with him cuz then it's during those times. It's not like a stop step, stop. Okay, now we're going to take a step. Now what, God? And but yeah. then it's just a flow with him. That's so good. And being able to stay it's you're with him all day every day. He's there doing work with me, you yeah. know, and I know I've not arrived in that, but being able to just be so aware of his presence and so in fellowship with him even yeah. when I don't need to make a decision, yeah. you know, yeah. just being with him because he's my heavenly father. That's so good and I think that women especially because so often we play so many different roles and we're doing so many different Mm -hmm. things and caring for so many people I think that sometimes we feel like if we don't have that start you know that it's like okay I've got to have this 30 minutes carved out so that I'm doing my good part Mm -hmm. um you know but it it can just be a continuous flow throughout your day of constantly being aware um that he's right there with you and he's walking with you whether it's in ministry whether you're grocery shopping you know whether you're (laughs) driving down the road that he's just always present and always accessible to us. Yeah, and it's when we're in that fellowship with him that then he's able to, we're able to hear his voice more clearly whenever he does take a sidestep. Hey, talk to this person. Lead this person to to me, you know, pray for this person. And then we're just able to be able to be guided by him even more easily yeah so. that's so good yeah. and I think you model that so well I'm mm-hmm. I'm curious you know if there are women listening who are like man I'm, I'm watching all these episodes on women in ministry and they're doing all these great things what advice would you give to somebody who is saying I'm trying as a woman to find my place like what's my calling or what does God have for me you yeah know, how would you encourage them in that it's a really good question um one thing that um I believe the Lord has shown me is be faithful where he's planted you. Oh, that's good. And because I know that at least for me, it had kind of, it, 
a calling or God's calling on my life could be almost like an idol and like okay whenever I get to that place then I'll be happy then I'll be content now I've arrived and that's not what any of the Christian walk is, is yeah this, I've arrived that's not yeah. what that's okay, not I'm what good it is now. yeah yeah I don't have to grow anymore yeah. but um be faithful where with the where the Lord has planted you um you know there was that one year that after we moved here um and I wasn't at the PRC I wanted to be there but the Lord planted me somewhere else mm-hmm. and um it was so beneficial for me. It honestly got help to uproot a whole lot of pride that I had no clue was there. Um, I was like, God, this looks like a backward step. It wasn't at all. Yeah. He was, I t- got to lead so many people to the Lord in that job. I got to, um, me amazing Christians at that job um but it wasn't what my ideal job looked like at that yeah. time and so um I it could have been very easy for me to get very discontent to be like okay like to lose faith in the Lord but I needed to be faithful where God had me planted mm-hmm. and then he was able to increase me to the next step and prepare yeah. me for the next step I don't know if I would have been prepared for the PRC if I had jumped right into that when the Lord needed to do a work for me yeah it, work in me yeah, yeah. That's so good. It made me think of um, a couple of things. One, you know, the servant who was faithful with a little, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's one of Jesus's parables where he says that you were faithful with a little, I'm going to give you even more. And I think that God does take us from glory to glory like that. Like when he sees that you'll be faithful Mm -hmm. where he's planted you, then he does grow you and stretch you. But I also think just remembering that nothing is wasted. So if it is a, um, a woman listening who's in a season right now where you're like, this is like pointless. I'm not, I have so much more to offer the world. Just knowing that like God's not wasting the season that you're in Mm -hmm. um that he does mold us and shape us and and he's just so good that he can use every single season that we walk through and um he just he sees things from like the the big picture you Mm -hmm. know and we're so like zeroed in on things (laughs) that we're like this is all I see right now it doesn't make sense um so just trusting him yeah you know and I know at least for my personality type I like to okay God I'm gonna get things done I'm gonna do things for you and like I'll just make it happen but uh, that's not what's gonna help in those Mm -mm. situations at all you know unless the Lord builds the house the laborers labor in vain so there's gonna be a whole lot of laboring in vain if I'm trying to do it if I'm trying to build my own house yeah when he's building it it's gonna be so much more beautiful than I could even imagine yeah yeah just kind of releasing control which is I think sometimes difficult for us as women (laughs) and it's so funny because we We've been doing studies on Fridays about different women in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And that's such a theme is that so many women throughout Scripture tried to really take matters into their own yeah. hands and kind of rush God's plan or do things in their own strength. Mm-hmm. And it just never works right. out well. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess lastly, we're definitely going to be linking the Pregnancy Resource Center and all y'all's social media pages yeah. so people can follow along and see what y'all are doing. Um, but if people who are local to Stanley County, if they want to get involved with the PRC and what y'all are doing to support women and families in the community, what are some next steps for them? How can they be yeah, a part? Yeah, absolutely. We're always uh, looking for prayer. We mm-hmm. always are wanting that. We have um, lots of abortion-minded, abortion-vulnerable women who do come through our doors. And so we're needing the Holy Spirit to be able to work in their hearts, to be able to soften their hearts, to be able to hear the word and get that seed planted in them, that of love, of God's love for them. So always prayer, whether you're in Stanley yeah. County or not, we would love that. Um, but then we do, if people are, have leading to volunteer, we would love that. Um, we do take material donations for our parenting program the cribs the diapers the wipes um yeah. all of that stuff baby clothes up to 2t um and then we do also receive financial donations um through the website the prcstanley.org um but we ask that people just be led in all of that we don't want people giving under compulsion we just want yeah. people to be led in whatever step that they take to partner with the prc that's so good so there are definitely opportunities for you to partner with the pregnancy resource center we'll link all of those things down below so you can be a part of uh, what God's doing through the Pregnancy Resource Center. And I'm just out of curiosity, would you comment below and let us know if rest and trusting God is something that you struggle with? Because that seems to be a theme, I think, for a lot of us and something that God's obviously speaking to Serena right now. So if rest is something that you've struggled with, comment below and let us know so that we can be praying for you and standing in agreement with you. We're so thankful that you're a part of this online community. We're really grateful for the opportunity just to grow in our relationships with Jesus together. Um, So thank you for being with us and we'll see you next time time on finding Jesus.